Hey guys, and welcome back to the WT Farm Girl channel. Uh, we are not quite into springtime, but today's gonna be nice, so I figured I'd get at least one project knocked off my list. And I think you guys will probably like this one. This is gonna be an ongoing sort of thing. Let me explain. Alright, so you guys remember the eagle coop that we had last year that my son had all of his chickens in? Um, you can see we've got a little bit of a problem um, in case you haven't gathered. Yeah, we have massive winds come through fall, winter, and actually they weren't as bad this year as they normally are. So um, this is staked into the ground and the wind obviously blew everything over. That's okay, we can go through and fix it. But that was one reason why we didn't keep the chickens in here over winter. The second reason is it's just easier having everybody all in one spot to, you know. Oh, wow. I am not going to show you, but I almost stepped in. But apparently this is the dog's potty area. Or maybe where Eric throws it all. I, I don't know. I'm not going to show you, though. I literally cannot take a step. So there's one thing that I want to point out. And this is... This is kind of a precursor to another project that we're kind of looking at for this summertime. But let me point this out real quick. Okay. Don't want to step in anything. So do you notice anything between this side of the fence and this side of the fence? Go ahead and put it in the comments down below. What do you notice? If you guessed that this side is much greener than this side, you are correct. Now there's two options. One is because the chickens went through and they ate all the grass down so it's all nice and level. It's all just fresh growth coming up. And look at all of that fresh growth. Uh, versus over here, this is all dead stuff that uh, died over winter and is laying on top of the newer stuff. Now if we dig in here, if we dig in here you can kind of see there's a little bit of new growth in there, a little bit, but nothing like this. Uh, the second reason is because this area, and specifically, had the chickens in it. This was all bare dirt. And then I pulled it up forward so they'd have a newer area so they wouldn't kill the grass. Obviously they didn't kill the grass because the grass grew back even better. I mean, you can literally see exactly where it was because of how dark it is. I'm not gonna give anything away for projects coming up just yet because that's gonna be a whole nother video but um, I really like what I'm seeing right here anyway hold that thought just pin it aside so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get this chicken coop area ready for more chickens but what we're gonna do is we are going to hatch baby chicks in there so I've got a couple of broody hens I'm gonna put them in there I'm gonna put some eggs in there with them and see what happens. Now this is where you guys come into play because, another exciting announcement, there is now high speed internet, fiber internet has been run to the house all winter. So now <laughs> I can upload at about 15 megabytes and download is about 100 plus. So that means now you can watch live those chicks hatching. I'm gonna put a webcam out there and you guys are gonna be able to see live when the baby chicks are hatching. Sound pretty cool? Yeah, so we're gonna move it in a couple different areas across the property. It's just gonna be kind of an experimental thing, just kind of so you guys can kind of check in on the farm live, see what's going on. You might catch me on cam, we might catch the cat on cam. Who knows what else you might catch? Maybe. Maybe we'll stick it in the backwoods and you guys can watch the wildlife. I mean, the range of the modem that we have is pretty good. So, if there's something specific you think would be cool to put the camera on, put it in the comments down below and we'll see what we can do. Right? So, anyway, without further ado, let's get this cleaned up. Man, it's so crazy what the frost does because these stakes right here, these were on the ground up to about right here originally, so about six inches. 
And uh, when I pulled them out, they were barely an inch into the dirt. So that's probably what happened with these too, is that the frost just pushed them right out. So as the frost pushes them up, then the uh, wind blows it over. All right, so we have both the wheels engaged. So now we are going to um, pull it backwards. We're gonna move it back this way, I think. I think that's what we're gonna do. Conversely, I might be able to just push it forward a little bit more. That might be a better idea. We'll just push it up to here. Um, so we'll give that a chance to grow back. Plus the new chicken, I really don't want them in the mud. We'll put them over here. That should be good for a new chicken and chicks. So we'll move these out of the way here. I thought the ground is really soft and you know those little skinny little wheels just do not like soft springtime ground so after I got it out of all the ruts that were in the ground you can see there's a rut right there that one wasn't too bad for some reason but then like right here it really got stuck right there it's probably like a mole tunnel and it just squished right into it so when you move it, you want to make sure it's in a somewhat flat area because you want to make sure your critter guards are going to keep critters out. <sighs> Phew. Okay. So this little tray right here, um, we're going to put some bedding into it. The only complaint is this site is pretty impossible to clean out as nicely as the other side. It would be nice if this had like a little tray or the bottom part that you could just pull out, but it doesn't. So we'll just have to scoop it out. So this is the nesting area. You can probably have like, I don't know, maybe like two or three chickens in there. We're going to have actually two hens and then... uh. I don't think the babies will fall in here. I don't I don't think so. I don't know. I've never actually hatched chicks before, so this is gonna be kind of fun and kind of interesting. So I did find some pine bedding from the horse trailer. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this open. Hey Sass. Everybody say hi to Sassy. There. Alright. I don't think we're gonna need a lot because you need room for the droppings too. Push it closed. I'm gonna put just a little bit in here and then I'm gonna put hay on top of that. Sassy. There! That looks better. You think sass? Hmm? 
buddy tot. What are you doing? Are you off hunting mousies? I'm just gonna in you go. Yeah. See how far in that is. Yeah. Um well, I know that you're a chicken. I don't really quite think you're that kind of chicken. What are you doing, dude? You're not a chicken? Wait, you think that's gonna be your house now? Yeah? get the rest of the fencing up before the cats decide that they're gonna try that out next. All right, so it appears that Michigan winter has taken its toll on the system here. The fencing itself is holding up really nicely, but unfortunately, the, uh, the lines have been winter rotted. Well, I did solve the problem. Not quite the way I'm sure you're expecting, but it works. Um, so I had these like step-in fence posts for the horse fence, and I don't know why. Um, maybe it's because they're a little bit shorter, but they seem to work really good. It has multiple points where I can attach it. Um, so I just kind of stab them in periodically where the fence needs just a little bit more support. And I don't think these will blow over quite as readily as the other fence posts will. So, um, yeah, so it works really good. I'm gonna wait to put the chickens in until Aaron comes home. Then I'm gonna go through and get it all set up with him this weekend. So stay tuned for more videos on the, the Chicks Live. I'll let you know where you can find them. I'll keep you posted as to when it's gonna be up and rolling. Oh, hey, we got another thing for you too. We're gonna go look at another maple syrup farm. And this one they do it a little bit different. Let's go. another maple syrup farm. This one is in Cedar Springs. And they do not do a vacuum system, but they do it a little bit different. Let me show you. So here's the system that they're using. And this type of system is becoming more popular, especially with smaller syrup producers, because it's very easy to put up and it's mostly all disposable. So this is, hung on the tap you can see right here's the tap and then here's the little line dropping into the bag so the bags typically are thrown out every season although some people like to wash them and reuse them so it collects the sap and uh they come by they can unhook it from they can unhook it from that and then just dump it right into a collection tank so this is one of their woods. They've got several different sections that they go through and they tap the trees on. You can see how much more open these trees are compared to ours. Some of these bags are really full. This is a big tree right here. This is a, uh, looks like a black maple. It's a black maple. Look how full that bag is. I know, it's got a lot of bags. It's got three bags. So what are you guys doing with this? Is this preheated sap? This, oh, I this see. This is syrup and this is, what our, this is our bottler. Oh, okay, this is your bottler. Filtering so it and bottling it. Oh, wow. So how fast does this uh, drain through? Uh, it'll probably take 10 or 15 minutes. That was just uh, 
talking to one of my subs, they were asking why they always bought maple syrup from somebody and it always molded. And I said, well, there's a good chance that it wasn't bottled warm enough. Wasn't bottled warm enough and they probably didn't keep it in the refrigerator. Oh, he said it was refrigerated. Oh, I did? Okay. It was cold when they bottled it then. Yeah. I'm Randy. <laughs> nice to meet you. That's Rick. I'm Rick. <laughs> and I'm Stacy. <laughs> That's Rick's daughter. <laughs> oh, your daughter? Yeah. Yep. Okay, she works at the female, so I've seen her before. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and was at the FFA meeting that you were at, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is your yeah, farm. My farm. Now, I've driven past here, like, I don't know how many different times. How big is your farm? Uh, we've got 80 acres here, and I've got another farm that's 60 acres, another one that's uh, 180. Oh wow! So, so you <laughs> that, farm, that you farm all over. Typical yeah. Michigan farming. Right, right. And my lens is foggy. <laughs> uh, farm about 450 acres. Okay. Total. And uh, how many acres of woods do you guys tap? Is it all your woods, or do you do other areas? Uh, we tap our own woods, and that's only probably 10 acres worth but then we also boil for the Cedar Springs FFA okay okay uh, yep yep so they tap out of their own school woods okay so how many total taps do you put into the system right here uh, between us and the FFA about 600 oh that's pretty good <laughs> now how many gallons of syrup do you make each year off that <laughs> it all depends on how good the run is. Last year we've done 102 gallon. Looks like it's going to be about 50 gallon this year. Really? Yeah. Why do you think it's going to be so low this Short year? Short season. It's done today. We're pulling really? our taps today. It, wow. The trees are starting to bud out and saps, the sugar contents dropped and well it'll start getting sour. Wow. The trees are budding. That's crazy. I like for us on our farm, like our wood stays so cold that usually we can tap and yeah. cook all the way into the middle of April. Yeah. But it's just, it's weird how different areas are affected. Yeah. But then with our trees, they don't typically start really producing until later on. Bigger trees. I don't know. They're oh. like. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. We're tapping a lot of stuff. That's yeah. Only. That's about like yeah. what we're tapping. But our woods is quite open. Yeah. Ours is so, very dense. So yeah. That's the difference. Yep. Yeah. It really makes a big difference. And what's your sugar content usually on the high end? Uh, on the high end is three. On the low and, end it would be? Uh, 1.9 we quit. Okay, so ours <laughs> typically averages about two to maybe three and a half on the top end. Yeah. So our content's usually lower, but our run's longer, yep. so. All right, so tell me about your system here. Uh, gravity system, we pump it into a tank outside. It gravity flows in comes into a uh, preheater. I don't know. Oh, so you do have a preheater system in there. Yeah, there is a preheater in there. Is this one that you made yourself? No. This was a bottom oh. one. There's a preheater oh, right there. Oh, that's the... All the steam goes up through the preheater and preheats oh, the sap as it comes into the... That's your float box. The float box. And your float box is even in there. That's Yeah, float box is in there so that's it stays warm. And... Uh, wow. And then that heats it up and then it flows up. And then it flows into here and you can see how how light it is. Is this here? This is a different type of setup. And though. then see that channel is darker. Yeah. Because it, it, the density it just keeps pushing. It goes through there, up there and down and by the time it gets over to the other corner when it gets to 219 it's syrup. So this is a mold so this is an erase flu system or a drop flu system? Drop it's, flu. Drop it is a drop flu. Yeah, it is a drop flu. But then you've got lots of channels up here, because like on ours, like the channels well, are all that, on the... That's just a flat pan up there. So if you've you, got... If you get back here... I'm still confused. You can see 
the drop flues. Oh, okay, yeah, yep. And the drop flues just give you uh, more surface area to heat. Yeah. Is what, uh, yeah, this is a drop flue pan. So this is where you... And then we draw off every day we switch directions. Uh, How does it know which direction off. to draw? Every, Every day you switch it to the other. That keeps the sugar sand from building up. But how do you, how does you, it know which direction to go? You, well, you change the float and change the Oh, shawl. okay, okay, okay. Which way it comes in. Which way it comes, pan. which way it leaves the float pan. Oh, okay. I understand it now. Wow, so this is, sorry. Nope. So you're the fire guy. Well, yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the fire guy. <laughs> okay, so yes, this is the syrup. Yeah, side this right is here. the syrup here, or it will be. And then it comes off right here. Yes, comes off here. This is the gauges we watch. Zero is actually 212 degrees boiling water. You have to go to seven more degrees for 219 for sap or syrup. Yeah. Now, is this a. Uh, this is motorized. Steam yeah, it's a steam hood. Does it have a fan in it that no, sucks the we steam? Just have just vented. turbines up above it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, and this is a steam hood too. Yep, so that's steam hood. There. Is this like a roaring fire for you guys, or you just have it kind of tamed right now? Uh, we've had it a lot higher, um, but that's pretty normal. How many gallons per hour do you guys typically cook off on your system? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All these technical yeah, questions. It's, it's hard to say. Um, with good dry wood, you could probably do close to 30 to 40 gallons an hour. But if the wood's a little wet and the fire doesn't get quite as hot, then you're cutting back. Yeah. So it's, it's, we have had it as high as 40. Yeah. Now, how often do you guys cook? We've cooked, this is our 11th straight day. 11th straight day. Wow. For anywhere from 10 to 14 hours a day. Well, that makes sense because if, if you're cooking at 30 gallons per hour and you've got 600 taps, that's a lot of sap. Yeah. At one that's time, time. At the beginning of the run, we probably had 1,700 gallons of sap sitting here. Wow. Waiting to be cooked. Cooked. Now it's kind of interesting because um, last year Eric gave me a lot of grief because this was how small that I was cutting my wood up. You get but it made it, up. yeah. Yep. We were actually getting 40 gallons per hour the year before we got 20. Yeah. Yeah. So it caught and my it, cook time in and half. like we say, if you got good dry wood, you can do that. Yeah. yeah. So those of you guys who don't know, this is the size that you split it into. And they, I saw, I saw your wood splitter out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We That's keep the running secret. A lot. <laughs> I see you guys have the same. Um, we were using this on ours, and you have the same problem we had, where yeah. it slides off. See how it shifted yeah, off to one like side? Basket. Yeah, ours did that too. Yeah. So what is this a three by ten system? Yeah, I think that's what they call it. This is a leader. This is where it's coming in right there. That hose from our tank outside. And then we have this on this part here it's so that we it. can, yeah, it's a gauge for us for our tank. Oh. We can keep, right now the tank is completely full. Oh. And uh, as that goes down, we'll know when to go out and pump more in. Wow, that is a neat idea. Yeah. So. That's very cool. <laughs> Just I like that. that. So you don't have to, yes, yeah, so you don't have to run outside and keep checking right. on it. Yep. We did that the first couple of years. <laughs> Rick's been doing it for this is the eleventh year. Eleventh year. So you've been cooking syrup for eleven years. Yeah. So you didn't inherit the syrup cooking gene. Nope. <laughs> so what got you into it? Were the kids like, I want some pancakes? You're like, well, I'll go tap a tree. No. Started it after I got rid of the dairy cattle. Oh. <laughs> Had more time on his hands. <laughs> well, thank you guys for showing me your uh, syrup setup out here. Yep. Now, what was this? Uh, did you make? What did this used to be before it was a sugar shack? Before it was a sugar shack? <laughs> was it a chicken shack? It was a garage. Before that it was the farm shop. Oh. Before that it was a hog barn. Wow, so it's got a lot of history in yeah, here. It's probably it's well, over 100, 100 years. well over 100 years old. Wow. That's been moved twice. Really? <laughs> 
Well, how very cool. <laughs> You store this half in these too? Yeah. And these used to be for milk? Yes. Oh. So you guys are recycling your dairy equipment. <laughs> it works. Wow, yeah, that's pretty neat. All right, so we picked a good day. It's nice and sunny today. Aaron's got his chicken. She's gotten a lot larger since he last saw her. So the chickens are saying goodbye. And uh, we've got this one, my buff Orpingtons like to go broody, which is exactly what you want for hatching baby chicks. So uh, I know a lot of people like egg incubators, but being times as they are, it's nice to be able to um, grow your own food the natural way. So we're going to see if they can hatch out some chicks. I've been wanting to try this for a while, and this Egglue Cube Coop, I think, is the perfect solution for it. They don't have to worry about the rooster eating the babies. Right, think, boy, you got some meaty thighs on you, girlfriend. I just feel how meaty she is. Make me kind of hungry. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna bring them on over and boy, this will be the perfect day for them. It's so nice right now. You did a good job, up. This chicken's a little scared. I can feel her trembling. It's okay. This is a bad for I've never had a chicken trumpet before. Um, this coop can hold, you know, three buff orpine pins, but we're just gonna do the two because we want them to hatch some babies so they don't get too crowded in there. There you go. <laughs> She's like, let me in. Okay, you have to get out. Good job. Ow. All right. There you go. Oh, had to go a little aggressive on that one. So they're gonna like this because they've got some grass in here they can eat. Some bugs. There. Oh, look at they're already excited. They get some sunshine. Aw, look how happy they are. Be good for him. Like, oh, there's some water. So actually, this is nice because the white chicken will probably remember this cage, and she should teach the yellow chicken about the inside. I got some food, but I can't get in there with my waddle. <laughs> comb, comb, comb. So what you think? We're gonna get some babies? Yeah. So we're not gonna put any eggs in there right away. You gonna open that up and see? See? My mom put lots of hay in there. So it's stuffed full now. There, good job. I added this to kind of give it a little extra um, rain protection and such. Oh no! Good call, bub. Good call. I forgot I left that in there. Oh, hold on. We gotta get this straight. Good job. It's a good thing I found my bucket. Good thing you found my bucket. Awesome. Now we just have to wait. Give him some time to acclimate. In a couple days, we'll put some eggs in there for him. Well, actually, we'll wait till they lay some eggs. And they should lay eggs. So then what we're going to do is uh, take the eggs out of the main coop that are fertilized and then put them underneath them. And I'm going to mark each egg. I've seen it where people set them aside and then they put them all under the chicken at once. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I should have enough eggs that I can just grab the day's haul and stick it under the chickens. I don't need a ton of babies, but I do want some. I want a lot. You want a lot? I bet you do. I like Alright, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to give this a thumbs up and put some thought into growing your own food for times such as this because you don't know. There's many different ways to grow food even if you're in the city. Um, I know keeping it Dutch, he's doing some hydroponic stuff. So you can head over there and check out and see the cool stuff that he's doing inside of his house to grow food. Which I think is a really cool idea um, for those of us who don't do so good with stuff in the ground. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Take care.